All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Kruger Show with a little 49er video. And uh, Dane Brugler is one of my favorite guys on the draft. And um, he he did an incredible breakdown of Ronnie Bell, the wide receiver from Michigan. Make sure you check out Pig and a Pickle, by the way. Two locations, Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week in Marin. Wednesday through Sunday in Emeryville. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. All right, let's talk about Dane Brugler. From the athletic and his breakdown on Ronnie Bell, I, you know Ronnie Bell. The more I watch Ronnie Bell, the more I love what I'm seeing from the Michigan wide receiver. Let's talk a little bit about him. I thought Brugler did an incredible uh, breakdown of Ronnie Bell. So Ronnie Bell is a wide receiver who played at Michigan, 5'11", 191 pounds, ran four five four with a one five four ten yard split, and um, he's a, he's a Kansas City kid. He's from Kansas City, Missouri. He grew up in the suburbs of Kansas City, uh, the oldest of four kids. And, you know, if you watch you watch Ronnie Bell, you say, wow, this guy is really refined as a wide receiver. And you're like, well, where does that come from? Where does how does this player look so developed and so veteran like? Sure enough, you do a deep dive on the Dane Brugler athletic scouting report on Ronnie Bell, and there it is in black and white. Ronnie Bell's dad was a college assistant coach. He grew up around the game, and he wasn't just a college assistant coach. He was a college wide receiver coach. And that really, that right there is the nugget of nuggets that tells you all about why Ronnie Bell is this naturally instinctive, super competitive, uh, better than his traits wide receiver. So let's talk a little bit about Ronnie Bell. He focused on, on hoops as a little kid. He began playing football in middle school. He went to Park Hill High School. He was a three-year varsity letterman at wide receiver, and he was also a return man. Uh, 63 receptions as a junior in high school with six touchdowns. 89 receptions as a senior with 21 touchdowns, 21 touchdowns as a senior, um, fourth most in the history of the state. How about that? And he was named the top player in that Kansas City area, uh, finished his career with 169 receptions and 31 touchdowns, three-year starter in high school in hoops as well, and uh, three-star high school recruit. Uh, received actual basketball scholarships um, and signed with Missouri State in 2017. And you know, so he's all, he's headed off to Missouri State to play basketball. But Jim Harbaugh talked to his brother-in-law, Jimmy Kane, and Jim Harbaugh discovered Ronnie Bell late in the recruiting process and recruited him hard. And Jimmy Kane told uh, Jim Harbaugh, Hey, Ronnie Bell's the best best receiver in the state. And so he recruited him hard to Michigan. And Missouri State would ultimately release Ronnie Bell from his basketball commitment. And they released him from his letter of intent, and he signed with the Wolverines. So, um, you know, really an amazing story. His father, Aaron, as I mentioned, uh, was a wide receiver coach, but his father played wide receiver for Pittsburgh State, Missouri State, and uh, Fort Scott Community College. And Aaron Bell is, is the, was the wide receiver coach at Division II Missouri Western State for nine seasons, 2006 through 2014. Aaron's coaching wide receivers um, for a Division II school. And, you know, Ronnie uh, obviously has picked up a lot from his pops, and he's only the 15th player to surpass 2,000 career receiving yards um, incredibly productive player. Uh, Ronnie's got two younger twin brothers. Um, he's graduated already. He's got a degree in social work, played in the 2023 Senior Bowl. Four-year starter for the Wolverines, 145 career receptions, nine career touchdowns at Michigan in 47 games, 31 starts. Um, and you just look at this kid, and everything you everything you look, about, look at him, you, you look into about him, you love. Um, he's not the biggest guy, but he plays big and, you know, he's not the, not the biggest guy, but he's fearless in a crowd. Heck, we saw that in the, in the OTAs made a number of plays in a crowd. 
and made it look easy. He's an aggressive blocker. Um, this guy understands that blocking in the run game is valuable. So the Niners are going to love Ronnie Bell because the Niners want to run it. And this guy's an aggressive blocker downfield. And anybody who knows football will tell you, you want big time, you know, run 60, 70, 80 yards. You got to have receivers that block because you get to that second and third level. Somebody's got to pick off the DB and it's the receiver. So this guy's an aggressive blocker. He's a really good route runner kind of sinks his hips coming in and out of the breaks like veteran receivers do. He's very refined for a college football receiver, for a rookie receiver. Many rookie receivers struggle to to make it in the NFL just simply because the difference in, you know, uh, the amount of the complexity of the game plans and all the little nuances to playing the position are significant. And NFL corners are top tier. And it takes a ton to fool them. So if you don't have the total package, man, you're going to have a hard time. And so lots of receivers come into the NFL. They think they're polished. They step in. They realize they don't know Jack. And it's going to take a whole year to learn it. So very few rookie receivers do well. I think Ronnie Bell is going to be the exception to that rule. He's an aggressive blocker, good route runner. He's got great short area quickness. This guy attacks the football. He tracks the ball exceptionally well. Um, You're also talking about a guy who, you know, tore his ACL in 2021, and you never would have known it if you watched him in 2022. I mean, this guy was the leading receiver for the Wolverines. He was phenomenal in 2022. So you're talking about a guy who's not just a good football player. He's also a leader. He's a two-time team captain. When he missed all of 2021, you know, the Wolverines coaching staff basically made him a player coach and he was like coaching the wide receivers and they hailed him as a, as a phenomenal coach. So why, you know, when football is the family business, those guys are advanced. And, and when the, when you're, when your dad played football, you're more, you have an advantage, um, compared to other players whose dads didn't play football. But when your dad coached football, then you've got a huge advantage, absolutely huge advantage, because then you're into the nuances and you're studying the, the fine, you know, the finer points of the game. This guy tore his ACL in 2021. He was a player coach the rest of the year and he's coaching the Wolverine receivers and they're hailing his work ethic. Um, and then he hits the field in 20, 20, uh, 2022. It was like he had never left. Really an impressive player. And then to me, the one, you know, you can look at the 5'11", 191, and, th- and that doesn't tell you much, right? Because that's there are bigger receivers. They're, they're definitely heavier receivers. The 4'5", 440 is fine, but it's nothing like, wow, there's guys who run in the 4'2s. There's guys who run in the 4'3s. But if you say who's the best football, best receiver in the game in the NFL, you're probably going to hear Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup ran four six two. This guy runs four five four. Cooper Cup's right about the same size, about six feet, not much more than two hundred pounds. So, yeah, you look at five eleven one ninety one four five four forty, and you're like, eh, dime a dozen. But when you start to look closer, and you start to really study the prospect. And you realize he's got a one five four ten 10-yard split, so he's got great short area quickness. Then you look at the number that I saw that I thought was uh, interesting, 38-and-a-half-inch vertical. So he's got lower body explosiveness, and you can see it in the short area quickness. He's also a tremendous leaper. This guy can go up in a crowd and make a play. But what I saw in the rookie minicamp was a player who's – you know, really, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot to like there. I mean, you you can see the production. To me, the thing that really comes flying, you know, just screaming out at you as you're watching him, this guy attacks the football like it's like it's his, like with purpose. You know, uh, and he plays the game fearless. And he may only be five eleven, but he plays big. Um, 
And, you know, you look at receivers and that those measurement, those measurables don't tell you much, but man, this guy can track the ball well down the field. And then you look at that 38 and a half inch vertical and the lower body explosiveness, and you can see the short area quickness and the route running ability and the desire to block, you know, these are the nuances of playing wide receiver. And then you can kind of see the work ethic and you can see the drive and you can see the determination and you can see the competitive fire and you can start to see the natural instincts and you watch it for a day and you're like, ah, guy had a big day. (laughs) Then you watch it, you know, day two and day three. And you're like, wait a second, that wasn't a big day. That's who this guy is. So Niners grabbed this guy in the seventh round. There are no roster spots available at wide receiver for the most part, right? You got Debo, Ayuk, Jawan Jennings, Danny Gray, Ray Ray McLeod. Those are five. Last year, you went with five. What about Willie Sneed? What about Chris Conley? You know, what about Tay Martin? What about five other receivers that are in camp? So the competition is going to be intense this summer but I am putting my money on Ronnie freaking bell. I can't believe that the Niners uh, were able to unearth this kind of a player in the seventh round. And I can't wait to see what he looks like this summer. This guy don't, doesn't look like much until the game starts and then watch out. All right. Hope you enjoyed our 49er video. Thanks to pig and a pickle pig and a pickle for being the proud sponsor of the Krug show, the title sponsor of the show. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. And thanks to all of you for supporting the Krug show on YouTube.